Well, good morning, Madam Chair. Thanks for holding this hearing today. I want to thank our witnesses for being here as well and sharing your thoughts on this really important legislative uh, effort. Um, as you know, Madam Chair, this subcommittee did some amazing work over the last few years. We laid out a compelling framework for the United States to lead the world in research, development, and manufacturing of autonomous automobiles. We also gave people hope. We gave hope to the people currently facing a life of restriction, introducing a whole new world of mobility for those with physical disabilities and for seniors. On that note, I'd like to recognize that not only on the witness panel is the head of the National Federation of the Blind, Mark Riccobono, but I am also pleased to welcome from uh, the great state of Oregon, the president of the state organization, Carla McQuillan. So we appreciate you and all of uh, the folks here uh, in the audience. From the, the first disruptor series hearing on self-driving cars in November of 2016, th three other hearings would follow, along with more than 300 stakeholder meetings. This process led to the markups in, <clears throat> in July of 2017, where AV legislation was approved unanimously and continued to House passage in September of 2017 with the same consensus result. Our Senate friends, who were committed to our shared goal, were not able to clear legislation in their chamber, unfortunately. It was a disappointing conclusion when you consider 12 bills from members of both sides of the aisle and this committee were rolled into our final product. I have always believed that this is the way this place is supposed to work, a bipartisan collaborative process. Now, despite the work that was done then and the setback uh, coming up short, we're still here today talking about a need to pass an AV bill in the House. The U.S. is in a global race to AVs, but today the cost of inaction is clear. We're falling behind. Now, I certainly respect the fact that my friends across the aisle have the gavel now, and it's ultimately up to them how to proceed uh, in this process. Given that, we have a respected uh, a process that the majority called for last year on how we reach an agreement, not just among ourselves, but also in accord with the bipartisan leadership of the Senate Commerce Committee. And I'm anxiously awaiting the consensus from that process, which I hope is imminent, so we can move expeditiously to the next step of this discussion. On that note, I'm pleased that uh, we have a witness from the American Association for Justice on the panel to provide your organization's perspective on how we might reach this elusive deal. Now, I, I want to be pretty transparent here, sir. It, it should be clear from the history of this process that Republicans and Democrats on this panel worked very hard with your organization to get sign-off and support when we first moved this bill. So you might imagine my disappointment when you all asked for more changes in the Senate, despite the deal we had here in the House with your organization. But it was even more curious that when Senate Republicans and Democrats ceded to the provisions you were seeking, you still didn't support the deal. So this was a bridge too far, so you can understand why I'm admittedly reticent to ask whether you all advocated uh, for last Congress is enough, and if it's not enough, why? And how are we going to deliver for the blind, the disabled, the elderly if we can't reach a compromise we can all trust in? So my plea to all of you is this. It takes not only a compromise among the members of this dais, but also all of you at this table. We're all Americans, and we share this goal together. We're talking about the United States leading the race and setting the rules, or frankly, having it dictated to us by other countries, other countries that are able to direct adoption and data collection, notably where citizens aren't lucky enough to have input from safety organizations, I might add. And we're talking about giving vulnerable populations an entirely new ability to live their lives with a new level of mobility. We're talking about how this initiative will lend itself to reducing emissions to protect our environment as well. All this can be done, and we don't have to compromise safety, and we won't. In fact, the roads actually will be safer. We have the opportunity to prevent a family from experiencing the overwhelming despair from the loss of a loved one due to human errors on the road. We lose something like 7,000 pedestrians. We have the ability to break down the barriers to mobility facing seniors in the disabled community, and we can create new economic opportunities by ensuring the United States can be a global leader in this emerging technology. So that's my ask to all of you. Work with us, and let's get this done this year. Thank you.